listen, uh, thank you so much for um, coming on the yeah. stream. Real quick, real yeah. quick, just to summarize everything, will you repeat your top three cloud mistakes that people make yes. for everybody who may not have yes. looked at your awesome video? Oh, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, number one, thinking cloud is only an IT decision. It is not. I can take you up the road right now to Birmingham, let you meet a guy named Trig. It works at a company up there. The idea was is he needed to learn cloud to better understand data privacy. Well, it turns out after he got his certification, he caught a major error that he met, they, met, they, were, they were about to make in a rollout of a workload in Germany. Trig's a freaking lawyer. He's a staff attorney. I'm telling you, when you start enabling departments outside of just IT when it comes to cloud implementation and putting them at the table when it comes to cloud strategy, you will see amazing things happen. Um, number two, get your freaking um, set up right because cloud will make you look bad. All the things that you're doing wrong, this is number two, will show up blinding clarity once you get into the cloud. So as you go there, don't be surprised if some of your cultural issues don't come to the fore. I stood in a room and I literally had this, I think there was, uh, Neil, I think there was about 50 people in there and they were in three different groups. I'm gonna turn the room to your perspective. Mm -hmm. There were some people in the front, there were some people back here, and there were some people back here. And I finally leaned and I said, hey, um, what's going on here? Because I can see a wall. Business, people, mm. the developers, and security mm. and security was mad at everyone because of cloud the dysfunction they had at that company grew in proportion when they got to the cloud and number three have a back out plan y'all i don't care if you don't use it i don't care if it's never used i hope you never use it because i think cloud's awesome but you need to understand where you're at what your situation is and what you got to do to throw that truck in reverse and back out of that hole just in case you need to. And I'm not going to get into the politics again. You can hear what we said earlier, but it, you need to understand that. I will say that on that one, going to the cloud is a business decision yeah. and no business person worth his or her while will not walk into a business situation without having a back out plan. It's Tom foolery, not do it. <laughs> it's, it's all about it's knowing Tom your risks. damn foolery. And that's, that, yes. that is a risk that you've got to figure out up front. Yeah. And so many companies are just too lazy, Jeff, to take the time because, oh, this is going to be hard. Well, wait till it gets bad, bruh. Then you're going to be in some trouble. You're really <laughs> going to have a lot to, 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 to pay for. So. whole thing, uh, Neil, about financial operations is becoming real. It's almost like a secure. No, it's better than that. I have told everybody that I've spoken to about cloud. When you go into cloud, I don't care what your flipping role is. Database, architecture, yeah. engineering, developer. You're putting on two more hats. You're going to put on security and you're going to put on cost operations, whether you like it or not. And why is this? Back in the day, you and I know this as well as anybody who's been in the DOD. We had no idea what a lot of the cost stuff was. That was oh, somebody no. Oh, no. over there and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Just, that, that crap's over there. Yeah. Yeah. You have no excuse now. You have no excuse. You can go into, uh, I think it's AWS. It's calculator.aws. You can start putting together the freaking budget, man. Like figuring out what but is something's going to cost. But, but real quick, real quick on that, though. I mean, like, I, I know it's easy for us to say, like, you can go do that. How is that taught? Like, do, do, is, is that a commonly taught thing to teach people how to do monetary calculations for their cloud instances? No, not at all. And it's one of the challenges we have in the space. There's just not a lot of training on that subject. And here's the other, oh, see, I'm, I'm supposed to do something dramatic tonight, Neil, remember? Well, no, no, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. You, you let me, I'll, okay. I'll okay. Leave, well, let me, well, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pointing at this, everybody. We didn't forget, and I'm pointing right back oh. at it because of that thing right there. It's not, Neil, you're pointing at something really, really important because it's not just have they been trained to do it, but have they been trained to hand the ancillary effect of being in the cloud? It's not enough just to say, oh, it's going to cost us this much to store it, but what if something happens and you need to move that data mm -hmm. out of that cloud provider? Now you're in a whole new place, man.
you're in a whole new place. And I'm going to tell an awesome story about that too. So no, there's not a lot of training on it. There's a lot of, let's figure, figure that out as we go along. I think AWS just implemented a course for this. Uh, just to talk about it a little bit, you can find some knowledge on it. But <laughs> honest to goodness, man, I have seen organization after organization after organization. They're just figuring it out as they go so, along. So, 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 they so, weren't ready for this. So, so Brooks, uh, so Brooks, we got our, our first question in from the community. Uh, you know, dying, <laughs> okay. dying to know here. Incoming INE exclusive course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will say this: if I were to write, if I were to do something like that, if this is what you're expecting, you're going to get something about like that because is it, it's a is much it, bigger but, subject but than you think. When you, when you talk about how much bigger it is, right? I mean, when we think about it, what is it? Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. I was just going to say, why, why is it so much bigger? Like, yeah, uh, like my my understanding of what you need to do is, okay, you, you take a look at the storage and compute requirements, the operating systems you need to put out there, your workloads you need to put out there. What else is there to it? Like, mm -hmm. I know that's an overly simplistic perspective, right? But like, okay, I could see it growing from here well, to here, but why, why is it this? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, talk about any workload whatsoever and what you could do with it, right? When you start going down this rabbit hole of cost, there's this whole idea of, first of all, well, does it run in less than 15 minutes? Well, we should put that on Lambda so we're going to pay per millisecond of spin time versus running a freaking virtual server. And then what if you just said, well, we've got to run it as a virtual server. Okay, that's fine. Does it have to run all the time? Or can you do something like buy a reserved instance, which is going to save you money depending on how long you reserve it for and how much you pay up front? Oh, there's also Spot. Spot is basically where you freaking um, bid on reserve space that Amazon isn't currently using. Let me tell you a flippin' dramatic, since you brought it up, Neil, an absolutely dramatic story on that front. Um, it's been years since it happened, but Novartis was doing something called uh, computational chemistry, and mm -hmm. my degree's in organic chemistry. I can talk about it for two seconds. <laughs> Here's the idea. Here's a molecule. You are looking for this molecule. Why? Because this molecule and this molecule, they run together, they shut stuff down. With cancer, if you can do that, you can save people's lives. So here's where Novartis was. They had a couple of mil a couple of million compounds they needed to figure out. Could any one of these possibly stop this darn cancer? There, and matter of fact, for anybody who doubts what I'm about to say, I challenge you to go on YouTube right now, go to Novartis, look up CTO. You should be able to find his uh, his talk on this thing. Your jaw's gonna drop. He was projecting. For the data center build. Oh, okay, Neil. Let's, Neil, okay, Neil, come at me here, man. What does a data center need to have? Give me all the stuff it needs to have. Uh, all the stuff? Servers, racks, power, all generators, cabling, people. Cooling, cooling. security. Yeah. All that stuff, yeah. okay? Network, so secondary figuring, network, secondary to... power. <laughs> exactly. Okay, exactly. Now, then here's the question. I'm going to get back to it in a moment. What were they trying to do? Were they trying to own a data center? Nope. That's not what Novartis does. They try to save people's lives and make them better. That's what that pharmaceutical company is doing. Luckily, they had a, 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 the, the projection was $40 million to build the data center and get all up and running. They had a partner. It wasn't AWS. They had a partner that said, let's take this to AWS and see if we can use spot instances. So what they did was is they bid on Slack space is what they did. So if you look at the run through the day, and I'm going to try to draw a graph here on the screen, okay? So <laughs> here's the day. As people stop using the servers during the day, all this space is Slack. All this space up here, everybody is Slack. Yeah, so everybody yeah. out there on cybersecurity see this space? These aren't being used. So what AWS does is they let you freaking bid on it. I have seen stuff that says you can save 90% off of your projected balance. Here's what they freaking did at the end of the day, man. And I'm not making it up. I challenge anybody to go look. The job ran in nine hours. I think they found three or four compounds, and AWS charged them a little over four thousand dollars. Wow! 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 So to your to, to the question, is it deeper than that? You damn right it yeah. is. It's because it's not only what you buy, but how you buy it. Oh, where it flipping sits. 
You do but, not. But hold on, 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 hold on. Is is that? I mean, what type? Are there any security issues, resource issues, data leakage issues, usability issues with using that Slack space on those EC2 on those instances? No, because what you've got to do is it goes right back to this idea of financial operations. They need to be smart enough to go. This particular workload right here, if it shuts down, it's okay. It's not on a schedule. Think of it this way. You've got to do a weekly report based on data that's finished on Sunday. You've got five days to finish it. Yeah. Five days. Yeah. That is a perfect call for doing a spot bid in AWS because you're going to get it done in five days. But it does mean that, for example, you've got to write stateless applications. Mm. So when it's done running and these things go away, because what AWS does is they send a signal to your EC2 and basically say, your virtual server, sorry, everybody, your virtual server and say, two minutes. You got a two minute warning. In two minutes, you're gonna be shut down. So you have to ele ele elegantly shut down, save off that workload. Wow. Push it back to a bucket, push it back to a database. Folks do it all the time, man. It's wow. absolutely brilliant. And that's what I'm saying. It's not that simple. You're just not freaking buying a server anymore. This is, oh, this is what I've told people before. My degree's in chemistry, man, organic chemistry. I've had the physics, I've had the calculus. The class that kicked my butt was painting. I couldn't stand it. And the reason I couldn't stand it was there was no right answer. Yeah. It was like art. I mean, it was art. That's what cloud is. Cloud and a lot of it's exactly is like art. <laughs> so, so let me let me ask you something. Yes, it's Brooklyn art. <laughs> so, so let's ask something from an art perspective then, because um, you, you brought up data centers, you brought up what's involved in a data center and things like that. Do you see the end of data centers in cloud? Do you mean the use of data centers by cloud providers or no? The use of data centers by, by enterprises. No, I don't. I see. I see them. I see them retaining a small workload still on prem. I still see it. Um, to be honest with you, the number of workloads that I've ever heard of coming back from being put on in the cloud and going, oh, that doesn't work, and bringing it back, is well below ten percent. And I mean, well below ten percent. Don't even stop at seven. I'm just going to say below ten. <laughs> but as for but as for folks getting rid of their data centers. Um, that's a tough one. I don't see a lot of people doing it. I will say I see more organizations starting up that will never have a data center. Ooh. I see that more than anything else. For up to the minute cybersecurity news, make sure you follow and subscribe to the Cyber and Security channel on Twitch and YouTube. Also, make sure you turn on those notifications so that you know when we go live.